Now, welcome guys back to the channel. In today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit about the future of aviation and what it might just look like, and especially how the plane of the future might just look like, and especially how fast it might just be. And for this video, right in front of us, we have the Ariane AS2, which is going to be a supersonic business jet. Right now, it's under development by Ariane Corporation, which is apparently an aircraft manufacturer from America. And yes, not too far into the future, this plane is going to be a real aircraft, which flies. Yes, this plane is supposed to do its first flight pretty soon. So yeah, let's talk a little bit about that today and also the future of actual supersonic travel. You know, will it ever return? In human history, we had supersonic travel before, but it's been gone for 16 or more years. You know, ever since the Concorde had its last flight. Now, how do we do this? Let's actually talk a little bit about the plane, maybe strip this down a little bit. We have a cockpit here, obviously. This is actually pretty realistic design. It's just very modern. Obviously, this is not the most most accurate representation of what it's going to look like. Here I think I have some more pictures. Yeah, here it is. This is what the cockpit is supposed to look like. This reminds me of something like the Pilatus PC-24. Pretty much down to earth when it comes to design. I mean, it has some very large screens. This is a super modern cockpit. I mean, yeah, this plane seems to be a pretty straightforward plane to fly as a pilot. That's pretty good. Now we have the Hornet yoke design here, which we can see in planes like the Pilatus PC-24, I think. And also in some Embraer planes, mostly in some small jets. It seems to be pretty nice. Again, this is quite a straightforward cockpit. Let's actually go into the cabin a little bit more. Obviously, this is supposed to be a private jet and a quick one <laughs> as well. As you can see, this is quite modern. We have a world map here. I cannot confirm that this is what it actually is going to look like, but this is how the cabin might just look like. Very spacious, I guess. I mean, after all, this is just a conventional private jet cabin. You can't really change that. So that's all the interior that is to the plane in the back. I don't know what is stored there. Probably fuel. As you can see, these wings are very, very thin. I can very much imagine that there's not going to be fuel in that one, but actually in the fuselage itself, which is obviously fine. You know what? Let's actually go ahead and get the fuel running, I guess. Let's just fly this plane. Let's see how it does. This is obviously going to be a pretty quick one. Can quickly accelerate. That's nice. All right. 150 knots. Perfect. Yeah, the plane flies flies just fine. I mean, really, it flies really fine. It flies like a fighter jet. Very nice. All right. Perfect. Oh, that gear retraction doesn't look healthy, but it works, I guess. Now, this plane in general has a very pointy design. You know, it has a very pointy nose, which is a sign that it's, well, supposed to go fast. You always want to be very aerodynamic when you go fast. So this may not be a very wide aircraft, but a pretty long one. It is like genuinely long, and that's what she said. Now, about the engine design, this plane has three engines, which is actually one engine less than all the other conventional supersonic airliners that we have had before, you know, like the Concorde or the Tupolev Tu-144. These planes had four engines. This plane only has three. Now, these engines are General Electric Affinity engines, which are made for supersonic planes. Now, talking about supersonic, let's do that now. I don't know what the cruising altitude of this plane is going to be. I don't know. Let's just stay at 61,000 feet. That was a typical height for something like the Concorde. Let's turn on the autopilot which we have as well. There we go. Let's also turn on the auto throttle and set the plane to go to 1 Mach 50, which by the way is supersonic speed, which by the way we just reached. We are cruising at around 1 Mach and we are still gaining speed. That is awesome. 1.2. We are faster than the speed of sound. We are genuinely quick now. And yeah, the plane is having no issues with it. As you can see, we don't need fancy things like afterburners in this plane. You know, the Concorde did need afterburners in order to reach super supersonic speeds. This one doesn't at all, which by the way means that this plane is way more efficient, obviously, and which I hope, by the way, because the Concorde had the problem of eating a lot of fuel. This one is probably on the more efficient side. All right, that's pretty cool. Now, this plane can reach up to 1 Mach 50, which is very fast, obviously. It's not as fast as something like the Concorde. The Concorde could reach up to 2 Mach, but still, 1 Mach 50 is 
more than 60% quicker than most modern airliners. Look at this, we're super fast. This, by the way, is a very interesting wing shape. Doing something like an aileron roll is pretty easy because you don't have that much wingspan. Oh, the airplane didn't like this at all. Oopsies. Yeah, the plane really flies very nicely. Now, obviously, we have got the question still, well, is this plane ever going to become a reality? Is it ever going to have its first flight? And actually, it was already supposed to have its first flight last year, I think. But as of right now, it seems that next year, the Arion AS-2 is going to become a reality. Yes, it's going to make its first flight. And yeah, this plane was announced in 2014 by Arion. They then partnered up with Airbus to work on the plane, and then Airbus was replaced by Lockheed Martin, and then by Boeing. Yeah, this plane is kind of a slut of a plane. Wait, what am I saying? Now, if you are interested in buying this plane, it will cost you around $120 million to buy one of these, which is actually not too bad. I mean, that's how much you would pay for, you know, a, a normal airliner, depending on the airliner. But, you know, someone like super duper rich, like a billionaire, could genuinely buy this plane, which is pretty amazing, really. It's like buying your own space shuttle. Now you would only need to become a billionaire. Now these 120 million will get you the opportunity to transport around 12 people at a time in this plane, which is around the passenger capacity of a small private jet like the Pilatus PC-12. But as you could just see in the cabin, this plane does offer quite a lot of space for the passengers. This is obviously not gonna be like a commercial civil aviation plane, really. Now for a private jet, this plane doesn't even have the worst range, 8,800 kilometers or 4,700 nautical miles. That'll, of course, get you, like, you know, over the Atlantic and stuff. You cannot fly around the world with this plane necessarily. But, you know, after all, this is supposed to be a private jet, so why would you want to do that? There's not many private jets that would actually get you around the world. They are actually planning to build 500 of these planes, so I'm very looking forward to the future, definitely. I mean, I won't buy it because I don't have 120 million, but some might just do. So yeah, definitely, at least in private aviation, supersonic travel might just have a future. All right, so let's finish this off by trying to land this plane as well. The challenge about landing this plane is probably not getting a tail strike. I mean, after all, this is quite a long plane. I mean, let's see. That was actually pretty nice. All right, we do have thrust reversers, which are pretty fast. This plane stopped in no time, really. That was perfect. All right, no worries about that at all. This plane doesn't even need a specially long runway to stop. And unlike other supersonic aircraft like the well, the Tupole F or the Concorde. This plane doesn't need any snoop droop so that the pilots see something. This plane can land like just a normal plane. There we go. Even though you do pull up the nose quite a bit here, as you can see, that is quite a flare, but it's still fine, definitely. Very nice. Yeah, really nice. This plane uh, I like a lot. Now, this is for the civil aviation. You know, you can just put rocket engines onto an MD-80 and call it a day, right? I like how the airspeed indicator is like, genuinely broken now. Let's land this plane now. I mean, obviously, it's the stupidest idea I've seen today, at least. It's kind of cool, though. Oh, goodness. I mean, they're retiring all the MD-80s anyway, so, you know, why not build rocket engines into these planes? See how fast this is gonna stop. All right. Reverse thrusters. Activate it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, <laughs> Well, oh, oh no. Yeah, this is more of a realistic future of the civil aviation. Yeah, this looks a lot more like something like the Concorde or the Tupolev. As you can see, we have windows, which is great. Yeah, this is actually supposed to be an airliner. It also has three engines, just like the Arion, and it's also supposed to go supersonic. But unlike the Arion, this is supposed to be a passenger aircraft. Now, yes, I've already made a video about this one. It's actually not that different from the Arion, you know, just that it's a passenger version of it, kind of. And this plane is also going to be a reality pretty damn soon, which is pretty interesting. And lastly, here is the Concorde. You know, it's kind of weird to think about that we had all this supersonic flying technology all these years ago already, but we abandoned it because it didn't really make any money. It wasn't profitable. I mean, really, if you just think about that, a, a ticket on this plane used to cost around 12,000 bucks over the Atlantic, which is like, like, 
why would you pay for that if it's not even a very comfortable plane, you know? Okay, obviously you would pay for the Concorde experience, which is worth it, but you know. The more modern upcoming supersonic planes are going to be a lot better. Cause this plane, while it was pretty damn cool, it was not it was not perfect. Okay, it, it kinda was. It it was perfect in its way, but it wasn't you know whatever. Let's just land it. <laughs> Oh, that was embarrassing. Jesus. There we go. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's pretend this landing never happened. Ouch. We touched down on the tail wheel. So, yeah, guys. Thank you for watching today's video. And I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night.